TGIF Warriors. Hello, Hugo. Hi, everyone. Sinatra. Pretty good uh, trading week this week, considering the dog days of summer, right? Some nice moves. So, I'm doing pretty good, Sinatra. How are you doing? <clears throat> so, we have new lows for the move happening here in Euro. Uh, you know, I think we're getting pretty close to uh, some type of dollar top. We're starting to get divergence there. Uh, we have some nice divergence developing here. I normally don't look for huge reversals on Fridays, sometimes to my detriment because they happen. I kind of see them as uh, uh, book squaring kind of days, but uh, we're starting to get some divergences in Euro for a possible counter trend move next week. Hi, LZ, Arena, TGIF. Thank God I found Forex Analytics, right? So we're getting all kinds of uh, divergences in uh, Euro. Uh, Dixie still, you know, confirming the highs up here. So uh, something I was thinking of is with Euro making new highs here, and, you know, this happened on the last cycle. Um, check this out. Swiss isn't close to the highs, right? So uh, I remember last time up here, uh, Euro kept making new lows uh, and the Swiss could not make new highs and we had this. So uh, this could be another short, maybe above 92 without making new highs above 92.40 next week. So, um, you know, the Swiss seems to be holding up much better than the Euro. So I may look at that. Hello, Jamie. You know, I look at relative strength. Uh, you know, everything in this business is trade selection. You could be right about dollar direction and not have the right pair. So, you know, I'll compare things. This completely surprised me. I, I mean, it just kept going. I know we had the crude breakdown, but uh, what a move in Canada. Uh, could it correct? Yes, but look at the momentum on Canada. It's pretty pretty amazing. In fact, it's almost at uh, uh, some targets that I had a long time ago up here around 131. We're almost there. So maybe that's where it stalls next week. Um, Aussie. Ugly. I really don't know what to do with that. Gold looks like it's just a flag and it wants to go higher. It's given up nothing compared to silver. Silver never really rallied as much and didn't give up as much. And uh, uh, we do have a negative week in uh, the indexes, even though they rallied uh, much further than I thought they would. That was a good call by Blake yesterday, not getting trapped on advising people not to short into the hole on a breakdown. Right? Remember that yesterday? I was surprised that uh, NASDAQ got through this uh, uh, 14,920, but, you know, we're back underneath it. On a weekly basis, you have uh, a negative week, a two-week reversal on NASDAQ. If we close under, uh, right here is the off number. 14,916, and the S&P is way above. The S&P off number was at uh, 4,437. So you're gonna have a two week reversal in S&Ps unless it does something fantastic um, to the upside. Looks heavy to me. So uh, we have uh, Mark Newton's gonna be with us today. And uh, if uh, Mark's turning negative on indexes, we'll see what he has going to mark wise or cycle wise. So stick around for Mark. Yeah, they all look heavy. The heaviest is this. And again, with all the new highs we were making throughout the last month or so, never happened for Russell. 
okay? This was the best it could do, this rally right here. And we're sitting right on, uh, you know, I kept asking guests for the last uh, few months, because this is a weekly chart, is this consolidation or distribution? Uh, most answers were consolidation. Uh, I don't know, looks like distribution to me and that we could be headed towards the pre-COVID crash highs. Oh, sure. I think crude measured to about 59 or so. Whoops. You know, we had this breakdown here. So maybe down, I mean, the measured moves even deeper, right? There's the chart for Xcal. How have you been? I haven't seen you around for a while. Oh yeah, VIX. VIX is gonna be up again today. VIX had a good week. That's a nice candle, isn't it? I don't know if you could say Canada's stuck. It's been flying. Maybe it's stuck now. So I'll bring uh, Stell in. Uh, Stell, anything happening over on the... Uh... Is Stell even here? Oh, I'm he here, is here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, I go here. That's Liter right. I know Literally be... two minutes ago. So I'm here. Oh, well, then he knows exactly what's happening. I know everything. No, I don't. <laughs> um, you just wanted us to hear your pretty voice. That's, that's My it. Pretty right. squeaky voice. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think, bro? Zzz. What do I think? I'm not going to say anything different from yesterday, I'm afraid. I... Um, you know, yields are still low. The Bund is heading towards my 178 uh, target to short. I've been very patient with that. And I think we're going to get it. Um, we did get uh, data wise, not much. We got retail sales from the UK, which actually missed by quite a bit. Um, not sure what drove that, but uh, Sterling is underperforming as a, as a result. Cable is flirting at 136. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, if you look at weekly charts. Um, uh, There's a weekly on EG. Would you fade it? I wouldn't. I'm not. I, I, I've told you my view on EG. I, I think it we'll gets okay. to 83. And but then maybe we'll 88 first. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. All right, all right, anyway. Okay. But uh, commodities are going, are coming off. Oil is. Um, uh, below 63, well, nearly 62 now, um, uh, WTI, and it's um, it's a snap bang in the middle of a, a at the bottom actually of a, of a big zone which used to be resistance, now it should be support, but it's it's looking very heavy. As a result, commodity currencies like Norway are still on the back foot. Uh, I am I I still want to see. Uh, I know it's a, it might be a dream, but I want to see 10 in, in dollar Norway so that I can short it. And um, something similar in Euro Norway, something like anywhere close to 11, 11 20, I think is the level 11 10, 11 20 for Euro Norway. Uh, but otherwise, um, you know, nothing for me, nothing's changed. Where you know, equities are down a bit, they're gonna be up on Monday or something like that. You know how it is, I think, until next week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, Jackson Hole is going to be the key. The, I think the, the bottom line though is that. The markets are now starting to realize that the Fed mean it about tapering because there is a majority and uh, they keep they keep reminding us and telling us about tapering every every um, opportunity they get. So tapering is coming. The question is what um, what form, you know, what um, how much, uh, you know, there's all the all these questions, but uh, it's coming. And, and the market kind of doesn't think yet that it's going to be something um either significant or uh, something that, uh, you know, maybe they taper a little bit and they've been talking about hiking as well, but the market thinks that whatever they do, uh, it's not going to be substantial, let's say. So uh, otherwise, you know, 10-year US would not be at 125. You know, that's, that's the bottom line. So something's got to give. Either yields have to go a lot higher, uh, which means that stocks are going to have to go lower, or uh, the Fed has to... Um, take a step back and tell us at some point that, hey, you know what, we're going to taper, but we're very cautious about it, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, they could use Delta to delay it. 
Of course they can. Look, in the yeah. New Zealand, they they didn't hike and they're they're locking yeah. down for what three cases. So it's uh, they can, you know the excuse is there if they want it. Yes. Anyway, I don't know. For everything. I, I don't have anything anything new to say, unfortunately, or anything uh, uh, groundbreaking from yesterday. But uh, oh my god, you don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I got a whole buttload of stuff to show you guys. <laughs> My goodness. It's been, you know, hey, Dale, you know, how about this uh, volatility that we're seeing? Uh, nice August. It's great. It's exactly. Yeah. You said it perfectly. It's a nice August. When's the last time? Well, first of all, when's the last time we've got this kind of volatility in the FX market? let alone when's the last time we got a summer with this type of volatility. So, um, you know, you guys were talking a little bit about the Euro sterling and, and uh, Dale, you'd mentioned about, you know, being on the long side and Stelius, I know you're still looking for lower levels. Look, I mean, you know, the Euro, the Euro sterling came out of the, um, you know, we came out of the, the wedge, um, you know, and the break of the um, 85, 32 level. And that was bullish. Soon as we soon as we came out of the wedge and we broke that that thirty eight percent retracement, it's bullish. But now that we're at the six one eight retracement, I mean, you know, if you are in the 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 same mind of uh, Stelios and you think that that the euro sterling is going to go lower, this is the place you want to sell it or somewhere around here, I would think. And I I know Ryan, even though he's out of town and he's got a long term um, you know euro sterling short. Uh, you know, this, this is the area that you want to be on the sell side, in my opinion. But one of the things that you still have to be mindful of is that we had this false breakdown from two weeks yeah. ago, you know, and I, and I, I bet if Ryan was here, he would be, you know, thinking, Hey, you know, you, you probably want to sell into some strength here. I know he's longer term uh, short that, and, you know, he's looking for lower levels as, as is Stelio. So just a little food for thought for those of you that are in in that point of view, I, um, I never, I never say that, you know, that, you know, being biased in one direction, that's the only way you should trade, you know, but if you have a certain bias, you got to play into it, you know? So if like, for me, if I'm, I'm a, I'm a dollar bull, like I've been a dollar bull most of this year, every time I see this opportunity for the dollar to, to give me a, a, a place to be long, I, I I'll get long. But it won't. It doesn't mean that I, you know, I I'm gonna always be on the long side. But you know, like if you're a Euro Sterling bear, you may not have been short recently. But if your bias is that way, then you got to look at levels like these, being you know, testing key fib levels to 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 trade them um, in in the direction that you think. And this would be a perfect opportunity for those of you that are dollar. If you guys are dollar bears right now, you got to be looking at what we're what, where we're at. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm a dollar bull, and um, you know, but I know that the dollar has run really far. You look at the dollar Canadian, for example. Look, we're touching levels we haven't seen since since the end of 2019. And look look at the dollar Canadian. I mean, we were just talking about this. On Monday, how I was underperforming uh, the uh, the rest of the dollar pairs. Well, I would say that the dollar Canadian just played a little bit of catch up, and um, you can see we just hit 127 percent extension of the last leg lower. This 200 day moving average break, even though we we did um, you know underperform in the dollar Canadian, that's a three percent move in four days. So. Uh, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because you might not, you, you might, you might not uh, think, all right, I want to be long the Canadian dollar. But if you've been short the Canadian dollar, you've really got to take that into account. You know, you, you know, to getting a three percent move in currencies over the course of four days is in unheard. August. In August, it's unheard of, and and that type of these types of moves will wreak havoc. On central banks, they 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 do not like this type of volatility, so they're going to try to clamp down on it somehow. And uh, and you got you know you got to think that that is that that becomes a little bit of a risk. Look at the Canadian yen. We were talking about the Canadian yen as a head and shoulder setup. This was um, this was on the sixteenth, which was four days ago. If you go over to our free blog, 
you know, for those of you that um, are not Forex Analytics subscribers, where the hell is it? Uh, here, Canadian yen. Okay, head and shoulder pattern setup. Here we are. This is the neckline. We're below the 200 day moving average, but we're also hitting the highs from February of 2020. So I would be looking at this saying, all right, this is, you could say, oh, well, Blake, we're breaking the neckline. I wouldn't classify this as the neckline. I'd probably classify that as the neckline because this might be an overshoot right now. So the reason why I'm pointing this out is because if you're, if you're looking at this, you have to be really careful about being short, especially if you're, you know, short from, uh, you know, a couple of days back, let's say you read that blog on the 16th and you got short, which, you know, beginning of, or the end of last week, I was short Euro yen. I was short Aussie yen. So I get it. If you were playing these on the short side, I totally understand it, but you have to be a little mindful of where or how far we've gone in a very short period of time. You know, there's, 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 uh, there's something to be said when you're on the right side of the market. But when you get to like, like a lot of people ask me um, this question, especially in like the chat rooms, um, for those of you that don't know where the Forex analytics chat rooms are and, you know, where our trade rooms are at. And, you know, this is, this is us, uh, you know, having conversation. I'll just give you guys a an example. This is a Friday in the summer. And this is how much activity has been for the last hour since I've been awake or since then, I've, I've been awake longer than that, but in front of my computer. I got my front of my computer about right, oh, right here, where people started saying, good morning, Blake. Yeah, right there. This is how much activity has been just in the general chat room in the last hour. So you guys know where we're at. All right, a lot of people ask me in the chat room, hey, Blake, are you a, are you a day trader? Are you a swing trader? Look, I typically, I'm a swing trader, but if I get into a trade, and I'm long or short, whatever it is, X, Y, Z asset, and I get profitable really quickly, I will take it off. Because if you're, a, if, if you're in a trade, like let's say, I'm just, let's just give you an example. Um, let's say you're looking at this Euro dollar and um, you know, you're looking at this wedge and then all of a sudden we, we break this descending wedge, we break it higher um, you know, because it's a reversal wedge. We break a higher and, you know, I get long the euro at 116.90, right? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking to, um, I'm looking to get long and stay long over the next couple of days, you know, towards 118. Great. Well, if I get long the, the euro dollar at uh, 116.90, let's just say, and within two or three hours, it's trading at 117.60, and I'm up like 60 pips, 70 pips in a couple hours, I'm going to pull that sucker off the table, at least a portion of it. You know, so it, it's not necessarily about, you know, currencies getting to where you think they're going to go or the market's getting to where you think they're, they're going to go, but it's how much time did it take it to get there? And the reason why I'm pointing that out, because I've been looking at the dollar saying, okay, we have, the dollar has reached uh, these targets really quick. Like I look at the Aussie and everybody that listens here daily should know I'm getting to a point where I want to be long the Aussie because I've been targeting the 70 cent level, this whole zone right here for, for months and months and months. And we are really close to some pretty key levels in the Aussie dollar. I did not think we'd get here this quickly. I thought we would be trading down here and probably September, October timeframe. I had no idea we would be down, you know, almost at 71 cents this quick. So the, the risk to that is now that we're here, it's like, do you, do you really want to be long? Because how about if stocks actually do start selling off a little bit, you know, does the Aussie actually implode and trade down towards, you know, mid sixties? I think a lot's going to lot uh, a, a lot could possibly happen over this fall, and that's why this fall is going to be really interesting. You know, I've been waiting for this time for the FX market to have this type of volatility. I think um, we all have, but I'll tell you, um, I think volatility is going to be increasing dramatically going into this fall and for the years ahead. Um, if you guys, there's there's a lot of guys and gals that are in the chat room that have been in, you know, in um, 
you know, with us listening to, to not only the analysis of Forex analytics as we've been here as a team, but even prior to that, when I started the Morning Edge, you know, 15 years ago, um, when I was with the Wise Trade Group and MB Trading, and, you know, we've been broadcasting live. And just as we started Forex analytics, uh, Stelios and Dale, you, you guys would remember this. Do you remember the calls that we would make five years ago about every central bank coming to ZERP, going to ZERP? Do you remember those conversations? Yeah. Five years ago, right? And, and, and every central bank was in the middle of cutting rates, but not everybody was at zero interest rate policy. And we're like, oh, you know, eventually every, but every central bank is going to get to ZERP. All the major central banks will. And we, we effectively are, even if the RBA and the RBNZ, even though the rates are slightly higher, but, you know, effectively they are at as low as the, the central banks can go. They're basically at zero interest rate policy. The reason why I point this out is because I think moving forward, you're going to start to see rates moving dramatically. And as rates move dramatically higher, um, globally, you're going to see volatility pick up, right? Yep, that's the theory. Uh, let's see. And well, the, let's let's. I, I know a lot of people are skeptical about that, but how long can interest rates effectively stay at zero for everyone? You know. Yeah, I mean, and, they should, yeah. And well, Stelius, you've always argued that as rates, if rates move higher, that's going to be the catalyst that drives the dollar um, or not the dollar stocks lower. Right. So it'll be interesting yep. to see. I, I know I know um, this even even you look at bonds right now. People are surprised that bonds are holding up as well as they have. And I would say that this summer, I'm surprised that We've actually seen a rally in bonds and yields come down, but you know how long is that going to persist? And, you know, I, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see if rates can actually, you know, make a move. Um, so I, anyway, the the reason why I wanted to talk about some of this is because I think that we are going to see we are seeing increased volatility in currencies in August, and I guess I just want to say cursor. That, yeah, it's a precursor, right? You know, yeah. you guys better strap it up, strap it up and strap it on. And don't think I'm saying that in a sexual yeah. type of way. But yeah, put your seatbelt on, Blake. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you might have taken it as such. <laughs> <laughs> Richard said that did sound weird. Yeah. DJ you, said too you late. Hollywood guy. You. <laughs> you know what? Hey, look, sometimes I say things <coughs> that uh, they just pop out and it's a f yeah. and they just pop out. Get it? Yeah, it's a yeah. Friday. TGIF. Yeah. Thank goodness it's Friday. So um, anyway, I, I'm just uh, I, I want I want you guys to be, you know, looking at, you know, look at the dollar, man. This is a big breakout. I, I know it was my chart of the day yesterday, um, but I and I made it I made it a point uh, on on Twitter and I, you know, to, to point out that every central bank or every central bank, every analyst was wrong at the end of the year. Every one of them. Every, and I know we've talked about this in nauseam um, at the beginning of this year, but now it's really, really showing, right? I mean, look at the dollar index. And I guess the question is, where can we go from here? Um, what do you think, Stelios? I mean, you know, the dollar is really, I mean, it looks bullish. Dale, what do you got? What do you think? Uh, what do you, what do you we've think been saying, we've been saying target around 95, those lows there, maybe. It yeah. could easily go there, but it, it depends could. on all, depends on a lot of things. I mean, it, it, it could squeeze really, really uh, strongly um, and go way beyond that. But I think that should be a, uh, um, a, a a reasonable target, let's say. Yeah, if you guys don't think that the dollar can't go higher, I mean, this is I, I think this is a a perfect example of, you know, we have we have actually hit. Uh, or we have car carved out a, a higher low longer term. Um, you know, I, I actually think that well, we're going to measure Blake off that formation that you have. Uh, you know, well, 
I mean, if, if you, you took you the a, bottom, you know, yeah, you, you give it, you get a, uh, the yeah. thing is, I don't think the wedge played long enough. We didn't consolidate long enough to play it oh. as a wedge. Okay. That, that's why I don't think this is going to play out. I, I don't think, but what I do think is going to happen okay. is I do think we're going to challenge this previous support will yeah. act as current resistance. And that, that's the, um, that's what I think if you read, you know, you read the the blog post, I think we're going to, you know, 9450, which um, this, this would be the, if you look at the FIB longer term, right? That's a, oh, did I say 50%? It's a 38%. It's a 38% retracement of the, the Big move. entire move. And this would be very, uh, what should I say? Um the, a move to 9450 if the dollar is indeed moving down longer term which i do believe it is i you know if you go back to my you know conversations i uh, you know that we've had here over the last couple of weeks i actually think that the euro dollar is going to be a buy somewhere down here in the teens um b- meaning that the dollar index is going to be a sell probably up here around 9450 but that is a 38% retracement and a 38% retracement in a, um, in a, you know, a B equal C D equal leg is very doable and a very normal, you know, if you're, if you, if you're getting a lot, like if the dollar index is actually moving down longer term and you go like this, right. Let me copy that and then put it like this. So if you look at, you know, the dollar index and you go longer term, you know, we're actually going down to 80, which I think is actually quite doable to, to, to retrace 38% retracement, you know, so like, let's imagine, and this is kind of the way I envision it. You know, we, we rally probably over the next, you know, few weeks to a month or so, and, and we see a pullback in equities. And then we, pull vault to new highs and the dollar gets creamed, you know, and we, and we move, you know, to, to new lows. Uh, I, I mean, that's the way I, I see it for now, but yeah, I think the dollars caught the entire world off guard. I cannot tell you how many people have been bullish the dollar. And it's not just like, Oh, people have been bullish the dollar on this bounce the last few days. I'm just saying how many people have been bullish the dollar all of 2021. You, 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 you take any type of move that you see, uh, um, or did I say bullish? I meant bearish. How many people have been bearish the dollar all of 2021? Every time the dollar gets a bounce and you see it bounce, you know, people are, are like, you know, I'm shorting the dollar. I'm shorting the dollar. Everybody, everybody thinks the dollar is going to hell in a handbasket. But, you know, I think the argument that that is the most, um, you know, valid argument when you're talking about the dollar is you have to take a step back and, and realize it's not only the Fed that's providing liquidity. It isn't, you know, it's not just the Fed. It's, it's you know, the, the entire world has been, you know, providing liquidity in the, um, in this COVID world that we live in and pr- providing support for their currencies. Now you might, think, well, the Fed, you know, is still, you know, the rates are, you know, they, they're still providing a lot of liquidity, but they're, the interest rate expectations are shifting and they're shifting towards the dollar. And there are other central banks, like you take, you know, the RBNZ who, you know, the, the Kiwi dollar is actually acting a little bit better, but, you know, they, they didn't raise rates and they're, they're, it looks like they're going to, you know, you know, slant t- more towards the dovish side. So, you, you know, it's interest rate expectations move the dollar, not just, and, and currencies in general, not just, um, not just uh, uh, rates themselves. So that's, that's something that we have to think about moving forward. But I do think the dollar is going to continue to squeeze. I mean, unless, and this is what I wrote in the blog yesterday, unless we get a move back below 93.50 by the end of the day, I would not want to be short the dollar, not, not like, you know, not holding it over the weekend. You know, I, I know if you guys are scalping around, you're going to, you're going to, uh, you know, fade the dollar from time to time. I know I do. Um, but I wouldn't want to be short this weekend. 
if we close above 93, let's call it, you know, whatever the, the previous high here in April was. 19. 90. Oh, that one. Yeah. 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 That, that was 93.20 right there. Yeah, but this one yeah. is 93.40. We close above 93.40. I do not think you want to be on the long side. Uh, I'm going to give you one of you guys just, a, or oh, one of you guys, just one of you. I'm going to give you guys all a little bit of a, uh, 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 you know, uh, an idea here for those of you that, you know, want something to, that, that even keeps you away from the dollar. Dodge but it's coin you're going to show. You want to play. Yes. You want to be long Dodge coin, Doge coin <laughs> right now. I'm, jo- I'm joking. Um, I like the Aussie New Zealand here. Uh, and let me, let me uh, just show you something really quick. Okay. The Aussie New Zealand uh, was great following the RBNZ this week. We rallied to, to 105.50. We came back down, retested. Okay, I, I got to actually take you even into an hourly chart. So we rallied following the RBNZ, hit 105.50. Now, 105.50 was big because this 105.50 is the previous support from way back. You have to get back in the time machine over here. Um, I mean, that was way back in February, right? So we rallied, wait, this is an hourly chart, okay? Just follow me really quick. Rally, hit that resistance, retest, went long, uh, and uh, you, here, let's go, let's, let me just show you the analysis from earlier this week in the Aussie, Aussie New Zealand, for those of you that are Forex Analytics subscribers. So just so you can see how we've been playing this, okay? Here, let's go over to the hourly chart. So we rally off of the lows, hit 105.50. We hit that support again around the 104.50 bounce. And so here we go. This is the bounce, the the aftermath, right? Hit the 105.50 again. Here we are once again at this trend line here. And... And... All the way back up to the 127 percent extension comes right in around 104.24. So if you play this on the long side, your risk is really just below these lows. I mean, you think about this entry here where we're currently at stops below the lows. Target up here. So what's your risk reward on a on a trade like this being on the long side? I mean, you're risking one to make three. So you guys want an actionable item? then you can you can bypass all the dollar shenanigans right now keep it on the aussie kiwi and that's all i got for you today so i'm glad you guys listened in thanks for listening in today hope you guys are are, are great now um and i want to say visit our webinar sponsors um visit forest park fx uh it, those of you guys that have known that don't know me i've been trading for the last five and a half years or five years i was trading for uh, a firm. Um, and I stopped trading with them back in February, or March. Anyway, I opened uh, uh, my personal account because I couldn't trade my personal accounts uh, when I was trading for the firm for the last several years. And so I went through Forest Park, opened my account, and I'm actually getting cashback rebates. It's really kind of cool. If you are trading and you're not getting cash back rebates. I know people in Europe like Steve gets via PayPal. One of our guy, our traders in Australia gets uh, rebates via uh, PayPal. Um, make sure you visit them. You have to open your account through here and then you'll have a choice of your brokers that you can open your account with. But if you have questions, ask them right here on our website, that, lot, that Skype chat and that brokers at Forex Analytics uh, that email goes to Forest Park FX. We've been working with them for years. So um, make sure you visit our webinar sponsor. So appreciate it. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, Dale, I hope yeah. you have a great interview with um, with uh, Mr. Newton. Mark. Yes. Yep. I, 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 I love listening to Mark. So make sure you guys don't go anywhere. He He's one of those guys that, you know, over the years, uh, you know, as you know, I've, I've been watching CNBC for over 20 years, 25 years, something, you know, uh, and, and, you know, Mark Noon's one of those guys, whenever I'd see him on TV, I'd kind of stop and, you know, listen to what he 
does because he speaks my language. He speaks charts and he's been always been one of those guys. So, um, you know, over the last several years, having him on the face webinar has been a really great pleasure. So make sure you guys stick around and listen to Dale and Mark Newton. I'm glad I was also, able to introduce him to you. Hey, well, well all, you know, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad you brought him along. And he also is a contributor over at uh, Trader Summit as well. So, um, yeah, it's great to great, great to listen in. Have a great interview. And um, you guys have a great Friday. OK, thank you. Hello, Mark. Welcome back. Hey, Dale, how are you? Pretty good, man. So uh, um, I'm really curious to see what you're thinking in here. It's been a long time since we yeah. talked, so I'm, I'm just going to let you fly. No, thank you, sir. I uh, okay. hope everybody's well. Thanks for, uh, you know, great to be here this morning. Nice Friday morning. And uh, things are starting to, to get a little bit interesting, aren't they? And not only yeah. equities, but also in FX and uh, really, really all across uh, risk assets in general. So I thought I'd pick up, and thank you, by the way, Blake, for your comments, if you're still here, it's uh, very kind. Uh, you're welcome, nice to have you here, Mark. The dollar, certainly, you know, one of the more important developments, I think, in the last week is, is the move up to really the new highs for the year uh, in the DXY. Uh, you know, I've been doing technical analysis for probably 30 years, and, and you know, some patterns are just, bread and butter type patterns for how you look at things. And, and, and when you see, you know, what the DXY has done just since the spring and carving out a nice little base and then moving up above that, you know, typically those are pretty actionable type patterns and tend to be very high probability. And so, you know, I do think that we're going to follow through to the upside uh, in the DXY uh, in the near term. Uh, but I, I, I also think that it's probably just a corrective pattern that it does get up to 95 or, or potentially a little bit over 96 before we start to turn lower. What would make you think that it's more than that? Uh, just looking at the wave structure, I think of the move and, and but I, I, you know, I, I'm looking at the pullback into, you know, the early part of this year as being very much a, uh, you know, a nice five wave decline. And so, okay. No, I don't know. I, I, I have to just go with, with what my analysis shows. And, and for right now, there's, there's no need to try to go against this breakout. If anything, you want to yeah. really press longs and, and stay short, you know, things, you know, euro or pound sterling and this and that. But, but I think, you that, know, Blake talks um, about Mark, how everyone their trade of the year coming into 2021 was uni unanimity on bearish a dollar. So, right. you know, by the time we get to 96 and now that's, you know, only about four months left in the year, that should uh, take some of the bearishness out of uh, the sentiment of the dollar and maybe yeah. set it up up there, right? I 100% I agree. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if, if we rally up over the next uh, couple months or potentially in a year end, I mean, that would certainly set up for a very good chance to, uh, you know, I think get long commodities, get long EM into next year, potentially. But but okay. uh, right now we're going to see exactly the opposite in the near term. You, I think we'll see a lot of deterioration in, uh, you know, not necessarily China. We've already seen, you know, a lot of weakness there. But, but uh, you know, my thinking is we'll continue to see weakness. And, you know, EEM, when you look at that, I mean, that's really starting to roll over and implode. And that's just a very bearish yeah. near-term pattern. I think we probably get down to 47, 48 in there near term. But that, you know, we're getting towards the probably the final uh, stage of this little sell-off in, in the near term. Um, but yeah, let's just without. So you uh, probably uh, wait for uh, yeah uh, the Dixie at ninety six to look at foreign markets. But yeah, this is this is what I'm really curious about here and uh, what you're thinking here with the S and P's. Well, you know, I think that uh, it was important um, to see the little bit of a bounce what we saw yesterday. Uh, it really happened right at a key you know, 50% retracement of this move up from July. And also, if you look at the wave structure of how this unfolded, uh, um, you know, my thinking is that, uh, you know, is exactly 1.618 of this first move down where we bottomed out. So that's important. But the, the, the sort of the takeaway here is that right now it's only been a three wave decline. And so just, you know, for those that study Elliott, uh, you know, I do think we probably have a little bit of a rally in store potentially today or, or Monday, and then we probably turn back lower and we probably mimic this little 
uh, decline from Monday in price and time into next week or even into early uh, September. But that's also interesting because if it's a if it's a ABC type correction, then that means we still have a likelihood of going back to new all time high territory. So, right. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. And what I've been telling people is the market is has really been dominated by so many of these, uh, you know, fang issues that uh, people have forgotten that you have literally, you know, five sectors that have literally uh, carried you know, the whole market. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them, you know, a lot of the groups so peaked out between the months of March and June. And so, you know, things like the value line and, and uh, many of these, I mean, this is 1700 stocks equal weighted. I mean, this is our market. So the market peaked out in June 8th, you know, it's not at all time highs. Uh, certainly if you include, you know, Microsoft and Apple, which are 12% of the S&P, then, you know, of course, yes, markets are much more resilient, but other things like the transports, I mean, they've clearly fallen out of favor as of mid-May. Those have broken longer term uptrends from last year. And, uh, you know, that's sort of interesting that, you know, you look at the leading groups like transports, semis, you know, the SOX is really at the same level it was back in February. And so when the S&P recently declined, um, you know, on in, in August 16th, that was an exact 180 day ratio from the February peaks in, in technology. And so you have seen a little bit of a slide in, in tech and some of that's been the SOX, but arguably, you know, the FANG stocks are still holding up pretty well when you look at Microsoft, Google, you know, Facebook, Apple, and, and those are, you know, so much of, of many of the indices and ETFs. So you really have to take that into consideration. And, and yes, the market is quite distorted. Uh, it's very much a mirage as to what's happening. Uh, small caps uh, have really yeah. been imploding of late. And that's really- I was going to ask, you know how many people I've asked this whole sideways pattern? So I ask you, Mark, is this- uh... Consolidation or distribution? Well, I think we're going to see distribution. I think we are going to break uh, 208. Uh, and, and so that's uh, sort of the way I look at things. And let me, let me yeah. pull up another chart just so I can show you uh, a couple of things I'm looking at. I'm going to, uh, I guess I should pause the share or stop the share. Let's see, resume share. Stop new share. share. And then yeah. new share. Okay. Um, so here's Optima and here's really the FANG uh, index that I've created. And this is just all of the larger cap growth stocks within technology and discretionary. And I've added Microsoft to that just to give people a feel. So this is really uh, the FANG, but look at what's happened. We really held prior highs and now we started to turn down. And this is in relative terms to the S&P below. You know, after a stellar uptrend, this really has been going sideways over the last year, and and but recently has been showing more weakness, specifically from February, and then we had a decent rally up from from May, and now that's starting to turn down again. But when you look at small caps, look at what's happened just in the last two days. So the IWM compared to the S and P has broken trends going back since last spring. Yeah. So that's a real big negative. I mean, you had a lot of people that were banking on you know, small caps being able to hold and then maybe reassert themselves and move back to new highs. So, you know, I just don't know. This makes me a lot more negative on, on these smaller names. And many people just got caught up with how quickly, you know, many yeah. of these single digit stocks went up multiples from last November into March. And then on the sell-off, they said, okay, well, it's going to be time to favor small caps again. And I just don't know. So I'm a little bit more negative. I think you have to stick with uh, large cap. And, and really what's interesting is that you look at what's happening with growth. Uh, saw a big breakout in growth back in June. And, uh, you know, even in the last couple of days, you've seen energy just start to implode and growth has started to pick up again. So I think in the next one or two weeks, you see growth accelerate means you probably see the large cap, you know, technology stocks hold up better than the rest for now. But then I think we are going to enter a time when, uh, you know, when crude probably stabilizes a little bit. And I think that's, you know. And it's yields. About, it's all about yields uh, for the growth stocks, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's probably right. So yields, 
you know, over the next week, I think that we're going to see yields likely dip a bit more. And so tech probably does okay. And then that's going to reverse. And I think we'll see the 10 year start a more meaningful uh, advance that gets us back up towards 175, 180. But, you know, I'm not in the camp that growth is going to, you know, reaccelerate in the U.S. I, I'm just not a real big buyer of, of, of the U.S. economy just booming in the, in the years ahead. I think that we are going to hit a slowdown. And so the, that, that would dovetail into my thinking that the dollar, you know, bounces, but then yet we stall and roll over. And I think, you know, even the yield move up is going to prove temporary and that, that uh, you know, it's going to be range bound, I think, for the next year. I think it's tough to see. So anyway, this the chart you have here is just yeah. EEM versus developed markets. Sorry, sometimes I'm talking okay. and I don't realize I should be sharing charts of what I'm speaking about. That's okay. But yeah, this is, uh, you know, as the dollar has moved up, this is the ratio of, of EM. And it really peaked in February along with many of the, the growth names initially, yeah. technology. And that's just hitting new lows now for the last couple of years. So this is still a pretty... Uh, pretty tough spot. In you, terms of you know, Mark, uh, I remember a prior interview was probably, I don't know, May, June. And uh, I think we at that time, and look, you know, if you don't learn how to change your mind, you won't have any change left. Uh, you thought there'd be right. some type of uh, yeah. trading turn to the downside. And, and there was. And, and you also said, and in October, I'm going to buy VIX calls. Yeah. So um, August, it looks, uh, especially with the action we had in the VIX um, this week, maybe we've already bottomed in VIX. And we've been putting in higher lows in VIX forever now. And I'm wondering if you think we're coming out of here. Okay. Uh, temporarily. Yeah, I'm not sure that I can put too much faith yet in having a big, big move. Uh, you know, everything, I, I want to avoid and, and tell other people to avoid getting too grandiose and making projections about large declines. And we really haven't seen any weakness, you know, and, and that's, the, that's the key. So yes, I do yeah. think that, uh, you know, we probably see a little bit of a, uh, a pop in the VIX. We're at uh, what, 22 or so, um, yeah, you know, the right, prior peaks are right up in the high thirties, low forties. Yeah. Uh, yes. I do think that we probably revisit this area into, you know, the fall equinox and the mid September. I think that's sort okay. of the period, but I, uh, I just don't know if we're going to get the larger move. I want to see all indices sort of move down under July lows at a minimum, you know, and, and, you know, yes, I do think that we're going to pull back to probably 4,300 in the short run, but, you know, let's, let's see us take out 4,222. Uh, you know, that would really open my eyes to the probability of a much, much larger correction across the board. And you just don't see that right now. You see, everybody clamoring to people have become really defensive in the last week. I mean, the sentiment polls have actually inverted. You see now more, more bears and bulls, which is crazy with markets literally right near all time high territory. So that's one yeah. thing to keep in mind. I think there's two factors that make me a little less real negative over the next few months. Uh, and I never thought I'd hear myself saying that heading into the fall, because I, I myself had thought this would be really the period that we have a real big correction. I'm thinking that likely gets postponed into probably into year end, probably mid November or late December when a real peak happens that rolls over that aligns with the seven year Shemitah cycle and the, uh, you know, the, the presidential cycle. And, you know, I just, I, I need to see proof at this point. So yes, I'm willing to play a, uh, a decline in the indices for a little bit and let's see what what happens let's see if it really starts to show some volatility but there's no need to swing for the fences when you know markets really haven't shown that much weakness and if we do you know start to to really get down near 4300 or 4250 then you're going to see fear like you haven't seen in a while heading into next month and so you know, I'm inclined to probably buy into that initially and, and see if, if markets still are going to push higher yet again. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's talk, uh, you want to talk gold? Because that's really interesting sure. what's happening with the dollar. So, uh, you know, I everybody's looking at seasonally, this is a great time for the metals and this and that. And, and you know, we just haven't seen it. I mean, gold peaked out last year, right around this time. And, uh, you know, we just saw a brief, 
brief little pullback, uh, brief rally. And now, you know, the decline, I think, has sort of reasserted itself. So I'm expecting one final flush in gold, and that should be a chance to really buy into it. Uh, silver has taken a lead on the downside. That's far weaker. Yeah. And I think, you know, you see a move down towards, you know, last fall's lows, 22 area. I'd be much more inclined to get long silver. and uh, But just not when the dollar... You know, if, if the dollar is, is continuing to move higher, it, it just makes it tough. And interest rates also. So I think that yields should start to turn up. And, uh, you know, I'll just I'll show you what I'm looking at here. And just I just think momentum is starting to improve a little bit. And some of the stuff I'm looking at wave wise makes me think that any pullback in the next week that we are going to form a bottom and that we're going to turn up and probably uh you know, this was looks to be a, a, a decent wave one move up off the lows. So I think you'll see anything down near 115 to one, you know, 20 or so in the 10 year would be a chance to really short treasuries and think we're finally going to start a little bit of a rally and, and, uh, and yields uh, treasury decline. So right. owning metals during that time should prove really difficult. I think if yeah. the dollar's moving up and yields are moving up, real rates are going to really uh, at least for the near term, they're going to prove to be uh, detrimental to, to the precious metals progress. Okay. And energy that, you know, was a, a darling for a while and it broke down, crude broke down. Yeah. I, I think that crude is actually closer to a time when I don't mind being, you know, trying to fight the trend a little bit only because I see this as being sort of a, again, ABC, you know, looking back ABC. at Elliot, I mean, it's not a five wave decline. So it's right. really, still part of the larger pattern where I think we're probably going to get back to highs and get back to 80. So I'm looking at this right now, the waves are equal between the move in July and the move here, right? It's 62 and a half. Now we're getting below that downside, I think should be capped around 58 maximum, maybe even 60. The next week is going to show some evidence, I think of some stabilization, but for right now, sure. Classical technical analysis would tell you, you know, yeah, that's, that's certainly very weak when you break a, a multi-month uptrend like that. And so it looks like you have a little bit more to go on the downside. Deal. Okay. Um, crypto. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm long a little bit of uh, like things like Bitcoin, but I, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know how far I can trust it. I think that momentum is starting to roll over a little bit on this consolidation. And uh, I just don't know. I, I think that you can still make, case for sort of an ABC type move. I'm looking for Bitcoin right around 50,000 and uh, really using a stop of right near 43.9. And if it gets below that, then I'm just going to pull everything and, and think I revisit it. I got out of most of my crypto between January and March of this year, but 75% of it was right near, you know, yeah, right near the middle part of February. And I did that only because we saw, you know, things like RSI got up, uh, you know, in the, in the high 90s. And we'd only seen that twice in, 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 in all of Bitcoin's history when you see monthly RSI get so overbought. And historically, you've seen almost 90 percent drawdowns from peak to trough. So, uh, you know, I, so I we do still haven't had a five. five. This could still be a four is what you're saying. Or we had a five. Uh, well, yeah, I see the way. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's sort of, yeah, I don't know what to make of, of the, I thought this was going to be a five here and we'd start yeah. up and, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know, but I think, I think right now this is sort of a corrective move. Uh, I'm just, I'm just not certain. My, my big thinking is that, you know, if, if some of the other cycles I looked at the cycle composite, it was actually negative for, for 2021. And I put that out a few months ago and people were aghast. And then all of a sudden Bitcoin started to turn down. I'm not sure whether it's going to be regulation or what, but uh, you know, for now I'm trying to stay very tactical and very short term in how I approach this and just simply be long until there's proof that this uh, doesn't work. But momentum is certainly improving on this move up, but uh you know, I'm still of the opinion that we probably peak out and then probably turn down again uh, as maybe you see a larger sell off in equities. I don't know that Bitcoin could avoid that, that money would just flock to Bitcoin and it would be a safe haven. I certainly don't see that. So uh, I have uh, we have an attendee asking uh, if you could take a look at I know you talked um, bonds and yields uh, TLT, please. Yeah.
Yeah, so I think we, we, we likely are going to test the highs that we've seen at 153. I mean, I see this as just being sort of a three-way move. So we probably test that or maybe even get above slightly, and then, uh, and then we probably start to give way. But, you know, the, the trend at this point still seems to be, you know, I don't, I don't take this as sort of a broken trend only because it's a three-way move. So I still think you're probably going to push and hit new highs. So uh, that, that means it's, it's right to be long for the time being. Okay. And then we'll see. And then, and then when we reverse, certainly if we take out, you know, 148.50 or definitely on a 145, then I can make the case to start to play for a move back down to lows. But I, I think we have one final uh, flush and yields and that, that happens over the next couple of weeks. And that means this goes higher. Okay. Thank you so much, Mark. So uh, why don't you show everyone uh, the best place uh, they could follow you. And I know that you're contributing on Traders Summit, but, you know, if they want uh, more of you than what yeah, you're let's see if I can, uh, placing. Let's see. So here's, can you see this in large screen? Let's see if that. Uh, I don't yeah, know if got it. it. Anyway, this is how you. Uh, yeah, let me try to reshare it again. This doesn't look like it worked. It was up there. I'll give you two seconds. There. Oh, it popped up and disappeared. So here's my contact info. Here's yeah. my uh, website. Uh, the email, I'm happy to send you copies of any notes. I put out two every weekday and one on the weekends. Uh, I, did a, I do weekly webinars every Thursday at one o'clock. I did one yesterday. And uh, yes, I am on Twitter and stock twits. And I do daily videos every weekday. So you can find those at YouTube. Those are all put there by my uh, intern. We uh, try to make sure it's, it's easy for people. So, Okay. Well, I'm, it was great to hear your views, Mark. I'm so glad that, uh, you know, we were able to work it out. And Yeah, thanks, Dale. I, I'm sorry about the, the That's okay. And, uh, you know, yeah. now you know the time, and I'll get a hold of you on uh, Twitter to schedule you later in the year. And really appreciate your views, Mark. Uh, uh, you're not only Blake's favorite. Uh, I think you're one of the best out there. Thank you, sir. No, I appreciate it, Dale. And uh, thanks okay. to everybody for tuning in today. And, uh we will uh, see you soon. So happy, okay. uh, happy rest yep. of the summer and happy take care, uh, Labor Day when the adults get back from the Hamptons, right? So uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway. my kids are going off to school, so I'm going to be an empty nester for the oh. first time ever. So it's just sort of an exciting wow. time. All right, well, Gary, but anyway, uh, enjoy the solitude. Yeah, right. Exactly. All right. Take care. Thank you, All my right. trading warrior brother, Mark Alrighty. Newton. Everyone, you can follow him on Twitter at. Mark Newton, CMT, and uh, that's a wrap for the week. I, I hope that we've helped you uh, and added value to what you're trying to accomplish as a trader here. And uh, if we have, uh, the best way to show your appreciation is to become part of our trading community. And the weekends are the best time to do it because it gives you a chance to navigate around and get comfortable. And, you know, everyone thought August, uh, not much was going to happen. So, you know, everyone's on vacation, but, you know, Blake killed it this week. All right. A few winners. I, I hope you guys did too, but we laid all on the court because we're rooting for you. Our mission is to build up and edify traders every day. Uh, we do it with the team and the guests that uh, we bring in. And I hope everyone has a great weekend. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And I really do believe if you um, give it a try and for 90 days and hang out in the chat room and have access to everyone's uh, research and patterns that you'll be, uh, you'll be happy. Well, you know what, Richard? Uh, you're saying, woo, 25 pips for the whole week. Let me tell you something. I bet that there are many people that wish they were just even. So don't poo-poo a winning week. That's from Coach. And with that being said, I'll see everyone on Monday. Have a great weekend. Adios. Oh, you could join the team for Morning Edge in 16 minutes as well to wrap the week. Okay. See you guys. Cheers.